Hey everyone, this is Dave again with Valor Fire Training. In this episode of Product Reviews, we're going to take a look at the Streamlight Fire Vulcan 180. So last year, Streamlight came out with their new Fire Vulcan 180. Uh, I've been using it for about nine months now. Uh, I've taken it to trainings. We've had it on a couple working fires. Uh, I'm a huge fan of some things. I'm not a huge fan of other things. So what I wanted to do was do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison so that you guys can see the older version versus the newer version. Uh, when they redesigned this Fire Vulcan, they kept some of the design features out of the old one, uh, which we're all familiar with. So if you look at the two handles, uh, they're very, very, very similar. The other thing that's almost identical is the attachment points. So really balanced. If you wear it with a shoulder strap, super comfortable. Uh, it comes with the exact same shoulder strap as the original version. Um, but when we move aside from that, they redesigned a bunch of stuff on this thing. So uh, we're all familiar with the metal switch. It went left and right. You had programmable features. Uh, this one offers just a single push button. Uh, so it's very ergonomic when you hold it in your hand you can use your thumb uh, and to program it it's a lot easier they actually took away some of the programmable features which I'm totally okay with uh, this thing you could program the front light the rear light you can make them flash not flash this thing it's really easy if you push it once it comes on high if you push it again it goes on low if you push it again it turns off if you hold it for four to five seconds when it's off, it programs the rear lights. So your options are steady on, flash, or off. Uh, so Streamlight, thank you, because this thing was confusing as hell to try to program. Um, I didn't ever use all the features, but I know that people would sit there and take 25, 30 minutes to figure out how to program this thing to get it to do what they wanted. Um, so they made it a lot easier for us. As far as the rest of the design, uh, this thing had 180 lumens on high, and it rocked 80 lumens on low, which was okay. Uh, it was definitely bright at the time, uh, but Streamlight figured out how to pack this thing with 1,200 lumens on high. I'm going to say that again. It's 1,200 lumens, which is insane. Uh, this thing is tremendously bright. Uh, on low mode, you're going to get 350 lumens, which is still more than what this is on high. Uh, and when I heard that, I was super concerned about battery life. I thought, well, if they're going to put that many lumens coming out of this thing, the battery life is going to suck. Or it's going to end up weighing four pounds heavier because they're going to have to put a bigger battery. What Streamlight engineers were able to do was pack this thing with 1,200 and 350 respectively on the lumens. Um, but they actually increased the battery life. So uh, this one ran for five hours on high, 10 hours on low. This one runs for almost six hours on high and 16 hours on low. So I was really impressed by that. I thought that was awesome that they were able to do that. But in order to do that, we did sacrifice a little bit of weight. So uh, this one is uh, about a pound and 13 ounces. This one comes in at two pounds, seven ounces. So it is gonna be a little bit heavier. Is it noticeable? If you're wearing it on a strap, no, it's not noticeable at all. Uh, so when we look at the flashlight head design and the actual light, uh, which is gonna be your meat and gravy of the light where you know the business end of this thing is, um, this one had a single LED that put out all of its light. This one uses three individual LEDs. They both have parabolic lenses, so you're going to get a nice focused beam. Um, but this one actually uses three LEDs in conjunction to come into one to make that uh, pattern. So uh, as far as the light head, the reason that they call this the 180 is that they actually designed this flashlight head to come out and rotate wherever you want it. So it rotates 180 degrees. Uh, and the reason why that's really cool is because if I'm doing an overhaul or if I'm on a medical scene or a car accident, I can take this, adjust it where I want it, set it on the ground, and they have figured out how to make it stable on all sides. So whether I want to lay it on its side, whether I want to lay it flat on its back, uh, however I want to put it, it's going to stay stable, which is awesome. Um, the only place that it's obviously not stable is here on the handle. If I set it like that, it's not going to go anywhere. But the bottom, the back, and the sides... 
uh, are going to be extremely stable. So I can put this on the ground. I can aim it wherever I want. Uh, I've used it on extrication trainings. I've used it on a couple medical calls uh, where I was treating a patient on a, on a street or on a roadway and I needed to have light. Uh, so it was definitely a lot better in that respect. Uh, so moving on to the bottom of it, the other thing that they changed is that they took these two bottoms uh, and they flattened this one out, but they also gave it a little bit of texture. So this had the charger mounting pieces, uh, which was awesome because I could hook it in the truck. It was really easy. You didn't ever miss uh, because it had these tabs to lock in. But when I put it on the table or on the ground, it became a little bit unstable. So what they did was move the charging ports to the back. So the connections for the charger are on the rear. Uh, and this gives you a completely solid base to sit on. They also added some textures so that it doesn't slide or slip on uh, surfaces. So that was cool. Uh, on the back, it's gonna have all your same markings as on the other flashlight. Um, the one thing that I don't like, and there, there was a, actually, actually I lied, there's a couple things that I don't like about this light. Um, when they redesigned this, they designed a new mounting plate. And one of the things that I liked about the old style is that I could take the original halogen version if I still had that mounted on a truck. I could pop the old one out, put the new flashlight in, no problem, same charger. So that was cool. Uh, when they redesigned this and they moved the charging ports or connections to the rear, uh, they redesigned the mounting plate. So you do have to pull the mounting plate off uh, if it's the older version and use the new one, which comes with the light. Uh, but the one saving grace to this is that it has the same exact form factor. So you don't have to worry about losing space. You don't have to worry about moving things if you have uh, a, a tick mounted here or a radio mounted over here. If this light fit in that area, this one's going to fit in the same area. Uh, so thank you, Streamlight, for doing that. The other thing that I'm not a huge fan of, uh, this light, while it rotates out, that's super cool. It's an awesome feature. Um, but this locking mechanism that they designed, uh, Streamlight, if you're listening, here's your part. So when they design this locking mechanism and you lock it down into place, I'm not going to do it because I can't get that thing undone. I've, I have to take a screwdriver and pop that tab back up in order to be able to make this thing rotate. Uh, I understand why it's there because you don't wanna be crawling down a hallway and have the light all of a sudden pop down. Uh, so with a gloved hand, completely not functional. Uh, even without a glove on, it's hard to get your fingernail down in there and get that tab to pop back up. So I leave mine in the stowed position up here. I uh, don't ever lock it. It is really hard to get that to pop out. Uh, so I'm not worried about it you know, moving as I'm crawling down a hallway or popping out, it would take a lot of force. So that's not a huge issue, um, but Streamlight, I wish you would kind of look at that and maybe redesign it a little bit. Uh, aside from that, I think it's spot on as far as the build. Streamlight's always been known for their build quality, so it's an awesome light in that respect. Uh, it has all the same ratings, so you're gonna get your Class 1 Division 2, II, Class 2 II Division 2, II, Class 3 T4 heat rating. Um, it's like I said before, NFPA 1901 compliant, no matter what position you mount it in. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, waterproof rating, it's still one meter. That's fine. I don't plan on scuba diving with the thing. So I think we're okay there. Um, but overall it's an awesome flashlight. So the biggest question is, am I going to switch to this? The answer is no, I'm not going to switch from using my original, uh, fire Vulcan led. I'm okay with the light output of this thing. Now, having said that, uh, both my career department and my volunteer departments use the Fire Vulcan 180. We love it. Uh, if I was going to spec a new truck, absolutely, I would put the Fire Vulcan 180 in it. Uh, there's no reason. They're both still on the market currently. There's no reason to move backwards and stay with what you have uh, if you have the opportunity to upgrade. Am I going to use my own money uh, to go out and buy this? Probably not. Uh, we've gotten to borrow. We've gotten to use it for a while. Um, it's not something that I would, would spend the money personally on, but if I'm a decision maker, if I have the money to spend, absolutely. That's what we're going to buy. So great light out of Streamlight, uh, awesome innovations that they've come out with for the use. Um, again, the lock tab Streamlight, think about it. Uh, I might want to fix that, but, uh, otherwise awesome light. Uh, it's been a, it's been a pleasure to use. Uh, I think it's got a lot of merit. I think the technology is getting there. Uh, the light output is absolutely amazing. So thanks for watching this episode. Uh, next episode, we're going to look at the Harris XL185 radio. Uh, it comes in a lot of different versions. We're going to talk about some of the technology that Harris uses uh, that makes it programmable and usable even down the road without having to change or buy new radios. So um, cool things coming out of Harris. We're going to look at that next episode. Until next time, stay safe, be good. We'll talk to you guys soon.